What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the world according to Briggs. I am Briggs and I, I kind of like my neighbors. In my old house I didn't really like my neighbors, but I like my neighbors. Do you hate your neighbors? A study published by Home.com showed that 30% of all Americans dislike their neighbors and have had at a minimum a full-blown argument with said neighbors. Another 40% said they avoid their neighbors, while 10% said they would like to do the nasty with the neighbor's spouse. A lot of people wish they could live in a ghost town for these reasons. No one to fight with, avoid, or catch stupid in your wife. Sort of like the people that prefer to live in the secluded towns in my past video series. Ghost towns are sprinkled all over the United States with a few states like Colorado having so many they'll get their own video in this series. This is one of those videos that people have been asking for for a while and I like to keep you guys happy seeing that without you I'm just some dude that travels, films, and says stupid crap. Ghost towns happen for a multitude of reasons. Most commonly they had some sort of industry like mining or manufacturing that for whatever reason went away with no way to make money people leave, hence a ghost town. Unless you're, of course, Thurman, West Virginia, they got no jobs and they got five residents hunting squirrel or something or moonshine. I don't know what they're doing there, but they're still living there. So why don't we find out where these vacant towns are and how they became vacant in my top 10 ghost towns in America. Number 10. Centralia, Pennsylvania. In 1962, Centralia was a bustling coal mining town that had just experienced a fire in one of their coal mines. No big deal. Life went on. In 1979, locals started becoming aware of some weird things happening around there, like, you know, smoke coming out of the ground, cracks in the ground, things like that. But the scale of the problem really wasn't known until a gas station owner, who was also the mayor at the time, John Coddington, inserted a dipstick into one of the underground tanks to check fuel levels. When he withdrew it, he noticed it was kind of hot. He lowered a thermometer into the tank on a string and was shocked to find out that the temperature of the gasoline in the tank was about 172 degrees Fahrenheit. Today, the fire still burns. In 1981, Centralia was condemned by the state and the city was evacuated. A few stubborn residents still reside in Centralia. The state has allowed them to live the rest of their lives out there. However, once they pass, their property will be claimed by eminent domain. In 2017, five homes and about six or seven people remained. You can go see it now, but I'm sure eventually it'll be closed off. Not sure how, but they will stop people from going to Centralia eventually. Number 9. Bannock, Montana. Bannock was founded in 1860 as a gold mining town and was actually the Montana Territory capital for one year. They moved the capital to Virginia City, another mining town that wasn't as remote and also didn't have a sheriff that was running a gang that robbed and dispatched people heading west. Yeah, that was a thing. The sheriff's crime spree came to an end like most criminals back in the Old West. Let's just say it involved a rope. At its peak, Bannock had a population of about 10,000 people. This was one of the longest standing mining towns in Montana. Most of the residents had left by 1950 and the last residents actually left in 1970. So not terribly far back. Today, the state has made Bannock an official state park with more than 50 buildings still standing. This place looks like a place a Western was filmed. And to younger people that have no idea what a Western is, think Clint Eastwood back in the 1970s. Go ahead and Google it. Put it on pause and go ahead and Google it. Number eight, Old Cahaba, Alabama. Cahaba was Alabama's first state capital from 1820 to 1825. Again, what is the deal with these towns turning into ghost towns after they moved the state capital? Good thing for the United States, Philly and New York didn't close up shop after they settled on DC, right? This is Alabama's most famous ghost town. It was used as a trading and transport center for cotton before the Civil War and as a village for slaves after the war. Nearly all the residents had skipped town by 1900. And now it's, it's pretty well maintained. It's a nice place to go visit. There's a lot of videos on it on YouTube. Although the area is no longer inhabited, the Alabama Historical Commission maintains the site as Old Cahaba Archaeological Park. It was added to the National Register of Historic Places in 1973. The town and later abandoned site has been the setting for many ghost stories. As you can imagine, any place that's got this kind of history is gonna have some ghost tales. Kind of like Scooby-Doo, but a little more realistic. A widely known one tells of a ghostly orb that kind of floats around this area that used to be an old garden maze. The old garden maze is no longer there, but apparently the orb is there on Friday the 13th at about mid... I'm just kidding, I don't know when it's there. But anyway, it's supposed to be there and it's a glowing orb. 
Number seven, Orla, Texas. Orla was a town designed as a stop on the Pecos River Railroad. Of course, after the automobile was invented, the train fell out of fashion and Orla was left to decay. Orla was founded in 1890. The population reached a high of around 250 people when oil, gas, and sulfur brought more workers into the region in the 1960s. Now here's a real oddity. This hardly ever happens to ghost towns. Orla has sprung back to life. I'm not kidding. Back as early as 2014, there were still just old buildings that were run down and a historical site marker. But since 2015 or so, construction companies have moved in and started putting up buildings and warehouses. Oil in the area has brought people back. Now it is still registered as a ghost town, but it has a truck stop and a few other businesses now. It's kind of weird. This place is out in the middle of nowhere. I guess if there's money to be made, people will show up. Money is like teenage boy hormones. It brings you to some really strange places you wouldn't normally go to. Number six, Bombay Beach, California. Bombay Beach became a vacation destination in the 1940s and 50s, and it's in the middle of the desert on what is known as the Salton Sea, which is actually a lake. Families and individuals lived here and vacationed here for many years. After local farmers used the lake for dumping, the water became so toxic that it had a putrid odor to it and it killed all the fish living in the lake. I mean, all of them. Nothing lives in that lake now. There are boats that were just abandoned and left in the mud. It, it really looks, looks like all the humans just got up one day and left. This place is an environmental nightmare. You can go there to this day and see dead birds that never got the memo about not drinking the water of the Salton Sea. This was, of course, way too toxic for humans, and quickly most of the residents just moved on. Left their homes there. It's just, it's sad. It really is. Been by there a few times in my life. Actually, one of the strangest dudes I have ever known in my life, he lived there for a while. Like when it was abandoned. Strange guy. Number five, Goldfield, Arizona. Goldfield was discovered in the late 1800s and had run out of gold before the turn of the century. And as humans do, when there's no gold or pumpkin spice lattes, they move on. An attempt was made to revive the city in 1921 when it was renamed Youngsburg, which sucked. Goldfield to Youngsburg? What genius decided that was a good idea? Probably some dude that had been out in the sun too long without a hat or sunblock and was getting all dizzy and said, oh, we name it Youngsburg or something. And then it stuck. In reality, it didn't matter. It was abandoned once again just five years later in 1926. In 1940, the U.S. military was training in the area and started a grass fire that burned half the town down. Today, it's a tourist attraction with a museum, saloon, and more. There's actually a guy that's considered the mayor of the town, but there's no real residence. So I find that strange. Talk about a giving yourself a title. If we're out giving out titles, I'm the king of YouTube, by the way, if anyone's asking. Number four, Iditarod, Alaska. The town of Iditarod was named after the Iditarod River, not the dog race. On Christmas Day, 1908, prospector John Beaton and Bill Dykeman found gold on Otter Creek, a tributary to the Iditarod River. And of course, when stories of gold or pumpkin spice latte start floating around, people show up. Miners started building a gold field and a small camp was built and later known as Flat. People and supplies traveled to the gold fields by boat from the Yukon River and up the Iditarod River to the current town site. Iditarod first appeared on the 1920 U.S. Census as an incorporated city of just 50 residents. The boom had already played out, so, you know, there was only like 50 people then. At its peak, they suspect it was closer to about 300 people. They're not totally sure. In 1931, it was disincorporated, leaving just a single resident by the 1940 census. Iditarod never appeared on the census again. And no, it's not on any Alaskan cruise. I checked. Number three, Rhyolite, Nevada. Rhyolite is within Death Valley, and like many ghost towns, Rhyolite was a booming mining town in the early 1900s. In its heyday, the city had a hospital, a stock exchange, and even an opera house. They had about 8,000 residents at one point, but by the 1920s, almost every resident had left thanks to natural and financial disasters. In the 1920 census, they had one resident left, and he was in his 90s. When they asked him why he had never left, he said, I don't know. Number two. Thurman, West Virginia. Thurman makes it on back-to-back -back lists. Good job, Thurman. I don't know why I just said that. The five remaining residents will never hear it. I don't think they can get internet. Thurman is located in southwestern West Virginia. The city's purpose was originally being a stop on a rail line and for local mining operations. The city racked up over $4 million in freight revenue over its lifetime. However, when the automotive industry took off, it kind of killed Thurman. Today, a few residents still reside here, but it's still considered a ghost town. I, that's just 
I know it just seems weird. If there's people still living there, it's really not a ghost town, but they still have it registered as one. Anyway, moving on. Here's a strange fact about Thurman, if in fact it is a fact. One of the two hotels in Thurman back in the day is known for being where the longest game of poker ever was played. According to Ripley's Believe It or Not, this card game lasted 14 years. I hope it wasn't a strip poker game. Could you imagine that? I'm sure at some point someone would have yelled, Come on, lady, I've been at it five years and all I've seen is an elbow. And number one, Calico, California. Here's one I've been to a few too many times in my life, and I don't know why my parents took us there like three or four times as kids. My younger brother and I believed they were looking for a good place to leave our older sister. Sadly, our dreams never were answered, no matter how many birthday wishes, wishbones, and coins into wells I wasted on it. Calico was a booming new city in 1881 when silver was found in the mines there. By 1890, the town had hit its population peak with about 3,500 residents, and that's same year, the Silver Purchase Act was enacted and drove down the price of silver. Calico silver mines were no longer economically viable. Today, it's a historical landmark and tourist attraction. You can pan for gold, take a ride on the Calico Odessa Railroad, watch people argue in the parking lot, or explore Maggie Mine, the only mine in America that's safe for visitors. That argue in the parking lot thing is something I saw as a kid, and I always remembered it. The couple was having a screaming match in the parking lot with a bunch of people around, and if I remember correctly, the man didn't want to leave and the lady did. I don't know if he wanted to stay like forever or just longer that day. Maybe he wanted to get a cheap home loan. Nothing like having a mortgage on a ghost town, right? Calico these days is mostly used for the backdrop of commercials like Geico and, you know, other type of commercials. But they still get visitors and you could see it from the highway. So that's, well, you can see the sign. They got Calico written on the hillside, um, which kind of interesting. I remember seeing that as a kid all the time as we drove by. I'd look for it the whole time we'd drive through the desert. It was weird. All right, so that's my top 10 best ghost towns in America. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you got some information out of it. This one was kind of interesting. I really enjoyed it. Um, hopefully, we'll get a bunch of views and I'll do some more. Anyway, don't forget all the links below. Don't forget to subscribe. Leave me a comment. Tell me if there's one you know about that should be on the next list. Everybody have a great day. Be nice to each other.